Who's introducing? And what are we saying? Should we do one word each? No. <laughs> Hello! And welcome back to Buckle Up. Today we are in some off roaders. That's all that's one word. Hyphenated. And we are going to find out which is the best. <laughs> <laughs> So we've come up with a number of metrics to compare these two cars against one another and the first of those is, drumroll please editor, that's you, <laughs> styling. Yes, um, which do you want to start with? Shall we start with the with... best one or that one? We'll, we'll, we'll start over here, we'll, we'll just we'll start over here. Okay, so this is a uh, Land Rover Discovery. Three, indeed. Uh, which isn't probably the ideal car to compare. You probably want a Discovery Four, but I actually prefer the styling of the Three because it's less Chelsea. Um, the grille isn't as ostentatious, and it doesn't have the fairy light <laughs> headlamps. But um, this is a classic, timeless design. This this yeah. will be a future classic. I wouldn't necessarily have one in black in silver. The, the press colour when this car was launched in, what was it, 2004 or something, this looked amazing. And it still looks fresh and modern-ish today. Yeah, I think I think you're definitely right about the black versus silver, because if this was silver, these wheel yeah, arches you were wouldn't more. look so... They do look a bit dated, the wheel arches, in terms of they're clearly a but bit faded. Yeah, that's age. But, yeah, I mean, this is definitely a timeless design, you know, the... The, the boxy styling, the, the shape, that silhouette. We're probably going to talk quite a lot about silhouettes today because, yeah, I mean, I do not like that particularly. But both of these cars do have pretty iconic silhouettes, don't yeah. they? Like when you say Range Rover, yeah, I think of one you of think them. Of that. And when you say Discovery, I you think definitely of one of them. think of one of these. I, I, I think that's the best looking Range Rover. Mm. I prefer it to the later 405 and whatever the hell the latest one's called. I don't know the number, actually. I don't know what the number is on the <laughs> latest one. I don't actually care, because I, I, if I was going to buy a Range Rover, I would buy that generation. I think that's mm. the that's the most... It is It is a very iconic silhouette. There's a reason Doug DeMuro's intro still has that silhouette on it. Because it's iconic. Yeah. But I just prefer this. I don't know. I can't really summarise it in words, but I don't know. I just like how this looks it's more bluff it's if i'm buying an off-roader i want it to look like an off-roader and this looks more like an off-roader yeah that i know it's not sporty well, it's, not, it's not a range rover sport no i mean that's not sporty and this either, isn't but... sporty either <laughs> no but it, it, i don't know something about that's... having the slightly i think in raked... a way that's that's more like polished whereas this is more go on i'm gonna it's, do some rock crawling it's too posh that's too posh for off-roading. You want something like this. Anyway, we're not going to agree on styling, are we? I mean, I think... I, mean, I, I like I, them both. I like both, yeah. But yeah. I prefer this. And I, I prefer that. Yeah. Hence, so I bought one. We'll move on to the next topic, which is... <gasps> powertrains. So, Rob, tell me about your powertrain. It is, Jasper, a 2.7 Line V6 mated to a six-speed ZF gearbox, which I'm sure you already knew, but Maybe. it means that it has 192 PS and nearest damn it 600 newton meters of torque. So pretty healthy numbers. Pretty healthy numbers. Yeah, and how much does the car weigh? Ooh, many, many tons, mm. like two and a bit. <laughs> 2.7 tons, I believe, which is, as far as I know, about the same weight as mine. Yes, but. Firstly, Sweden power isn't everything. Oh, you feeling all right? No. <laughs> uh, and secondly, um, that isn't the engine that I would pick if I was getting a disco. No. I would have the petrol 4.4 V8 Not because I yeah yeah, but it's, it's fine. No, You're no, making I'm, a, make I'm, a good noise. I'm, I'm appreciating. I like the... petrol. I don't really like diesel, mm -hmm. but. I understand the merits of a diesel engine for things like off-roading and yeah. having lots of torque and stuff, but 
if I was going to buy one, I would have the petrol. Yeah, so... It, and it, then it would be more similar in power to yours. Yeah, yeah. And and if you're cu- kind of cross-shopping cheaper, cheaper end Disco 3s with cheaper end L322s, mm. you are going to come across the 3-litre straight 6 diesel in that, which actually yes. has less power exactly. than this. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, therefore you could argue that very much so this engine would be better than that. It's all about where, where in the yeah. price range and engine range you actually manage to buy, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So, lift the bonnet of this and you find a thumping massive 4.4 litre turbo diesel V8. Yes. Twin sequential turbocharging, actually, in this. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, um, what's your this, power? So this this produces 313 PS and 700 Newton meters of torque. Okay. And that's fed to all four wheels through an eight-speed ZF gearbox. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that kind of eight-speed gearbox that throughout its iterations has made it into basically every car because nowadays. it's a really good gearbox. It's a really good gearbox. Um, so about 120 horsepower and 100 Newton meters of torque. Yeah. More. So this has got a bit more pulling power. In, and critically, you've also got those two extra gears, which do help with economy. Mm. Although that is kind of counteracted by the fact the engine is quite a lot bigger. How many miles to the gallon did you get on your way down here? Uh, about Twenty-five, but that's after a week and a half of commuting, which gets me mm. about twenty-two miles to the gallon. So on a run, you can pretty easily get about thirty, thirty-two out of this. On the way up here, that was doing twenty-eight and a half. That's not bad. That's yeah. Um, I mean, you, you're going to see. Worse fuel economy from a bigger yeah, engine oh, like this, yeah. even, even if you can counteract that a little bit with, with a, a better gearbox. Mm. So, yeah, swings and roundabouts in that respect. And I, a lot of this does come down to what you want from the car and what engines are actually available when you're buying, because mm. obviously this was available with a 3.6 litre TDV8, which had about 270, 280 horsepower. Um, and you could also get a 4.2 supercharged V8 yep. in this, as well as... Five litre. Five litre supercharged in a slightly later year. So quite a good range of engines irrespective of which vehicle. Yeah. And oh, talking about engines, what about mm. reliability? Um well Well mine's a Land Rover. Yeah, that one's also a Land Rover. Should we just move on? Yeah, I think so. Should we close this up? Although my engine is far less likely to shit itself at any given moment because of the crankshaft bearings actually being correctly designed in this. No one cares. You do when your engine stops working. So let's talk practicality. That's why we're sat in our boots on our split folding tailgates that's because a, Land Rover. Yeah, that's a big tick for both cars yeah. there, isn't it? I believe you have some figures on I an do iPad. Indeed. Yes, so here are some boot figures what I prepared earlier. <laughs> um, and the, uh, the, the interesting thing to note is that Land Rover give their boot figures from the boot floor all the way up to the top. So we have got in the Land Rover Discovery 3 with the rear seats in place, not the rear rear seats, but with the rear seats in place. The middle seats. Mm, the second row. <laughs> 1,192 litres of space. Ooh. And then if you drop that second row, that goes up to a very impressive 2,558 litres of space. Ah. So yes, that is actually the pretty clear winner mm. with this with this test. Uh, so the Range Rover with the seats with the rear seats folded up has 994 litres of space, which is yes, not as impressive, but it's still not exactly bad. No. Um, and then if you drop that that that. I was going to say second row, but I've not got a third row. So mm. if you drop those seats, you get 2,099 litres of space, which is, I mean, you, you can't really deny that both of these boots are pretty massive. Yep. But yeah, that one is more practical. Yeah. And obviously, as we've mentioned, this has a third it row. Does. Yes. And actual adults can sit in it. Yeah. So if if you've got more than three children... Don't don't buy a Range Rover because you will be leaving. Well, one of them will be left at home. At home, yes. Or <laughs> they'll have to be like a U in the boot. They'll have to like. That's illegal. We will not oh, condone yeah, that. Yeah, don't do that. Speaking of how many things you can fit in these cars, I. Yeah 
believe that people who have these kind of cars will also more than likely have an animal yeah. of some sort as a pet probably and a dog, dog. yes um, so what i think i'll do is i'll go and grab and dog and test out the boot and then i'll get you a dog and you can test out your boot okay good that yes. sounds like a plan let's do that i'll go and get our dogs um i'll get my dog first okay because it's just easier milo milo come with me milo come on come on here we go we're gonna try out the no 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 not over there no you don't want to go in the range over you want to go in this one come on milo milo come on yes there we go no i'm gonna pick you up with you <laughs> There we go. Do you like that? Yes. That is a happy dog, if ever I've seen a happy dog. Hello. Yeah, like put, that. Put, put that up, Rob. Put the lower tail, tailgate up. I'm just going to pop that up. It's all right. There we go. Look, you can see. Look, there's a <laughs> camera. Can you see? You love that, don't you? See? Right, happy dog. Yeah, yeah Agreed, yeah, yeah. happy dog. So, loads of space, loads of space. There's stuff, there's a radio. They can control the radio back here if, if you want to. They've got cup holders if they want to have a drink of something. Um, yeah, and they've got cubby holes, which you would definitely not keep treats in because that okay. would be bad. But I'll go and get your dog, one second. Okay. Oh, you can't have Milo. Why? Because I need to get you another dog. But so Milo's come on. Great. Milo, we're going to go out here now. You ready? Woo! <laughs> Diving board. There we go. <laughs> right. Uh, I'll be two seconds. Come on, Oscar. There we go. Uh, come on, Oscar. Here we go. You're going to have a go in the Range Rover. He's a little bit bigger. No, don't be silly. There you go. Okay. Right. Hello, Oscar. <laughs> Oscar. Oscar? <laughs> up, up. Oh. Oscar? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to. No, he does. He does. Come on, Oscar. Oscar. Have a grey hand. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Would you like to get back in the car? We have a dog handler, please. <laughs> dog handler on set, please. Oscar. Hey, baby. Come on, Oscar. Oscar, Oscar, come on, come on, we can do this. Oscar, do it. Oscar, do it. Oscar, do it. Up, up. Up, up. He's, he's thinking, he's it. thinking. We do need you back in at some point because this is how we got here. <laughs> I'll insert some footage here of when Milo just jumped straight in this boot. So no, no, no. This dog's reaction is not reflective of the quality of Range Rover's boot. Absolutely is. Uh, absolutely is. A dog never lies. Hello, Oscar. Come on. Can we lift you in? Can we try, please? Can we lift you in? Oh, you big snooty boy. I think this is a definitive win, regardless. What is it they Treat. say? Never work with children and animals. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've been working with Jasper for years. I know, that's what I thought. Release the Milo. Milo! Release Milo. the Milo! Milo, Ben! Ben! <laughs> Is he allowed the treat? <laughs> Milo! Milo! <laughs> well, there you go. That was a dog test. <laughs> he was way more enthusiastic about this boot. Well, he, no, because he's, he's, he's been, he's been, he's been watching another dog try and get in the boot for five minutes. Of course he wants to go in. He had oh. way more room in here. He's got light. Yeah, I mean, there are not as many features in the boot of this car because it's obviously not designed to have another row of seating yeah. in here. So, Speaking of seating... Oh, yeah, should we go and try out the... Should we move on to the interior? Yes. Because that's another comparison point for us, isn't it? Let's do that. Let's have a sit in. Yes, the, the next logical step, obviously. Discovery. After talking about uh, practicality... Would How be... was it getting in? Pretty good. Uh, these grab handles are excellent. Yes. And I also can see them being really useful for when your driver is giving it a bit of this off-road. You know, as you rock your way down the green lane, you've got something to grip onto with yes. terror. Yes. Um, now, the seats are wonderful, actually. They're, mm. they're very comfortable, good quality leather. The interior, more generally, mm. this is a Disco 3. So it's a little bit more old fashioned yeah. than a Disco 4 would be. The materials but are good. The materials are nice. Squidgy, mm. squidgy, squidgy, squidgy. Steering wheel, nice leather. 
What about the centre of it? No one gives a flying f Hey, that's that's all right. It's a, it's a squidgy, squidgy plastic. Um, in terms of your central bit, yeah, you've it is old fashioned, but at least it has buttons for stuff, so I yes. can. And I'm I'm sure it's the same in your Range Rover, but I can alter everything with gloves on if I needed to. Mm -hmm. Big buttons. Heated windscreen. I like how just I, it's just simple. Everything is like I, do, I don't actually think I would. If, if you blindfolded me, and please don't, but if you did, I think that I would be able to find how to change the temperature. Go on then. Okay, I actually can't see, but I would suspect it's here. Is yes, that, that, yeah? that is it? Right. Well, the, yeah, it's in the right, <laughs> like it's in the right place. It, yeah, it is. The, the controls all fall really easily to hand. Yeah. And as the resident whinger about materials, I can't really find anything to complain about in here. Everything feels well specified and actually pretty high quality. Yes. What I think we should do now, because what is one of the most Land rover -y things. Ha! Well, well, my dear, it <laughs> is the command driving position. Yes, so why don't we measure from the ground up to where I can put this seat in its highest position and I'll... Uh, With air suspension fully raised as well. Yes, to, um, to, to see who has the most command view. The most I genuinely don't know positions. which car will because this seems to go pretty high. Yes. That does as well. That goes quite high as well, but it's currently lowered. That that's is fine. Pretty incredible that that seat's all the way up, and my head still I can get isn't, my hand between... isn't touching the roof. I don't think I've ever done that in any car. Ever. Ever. Should we go to the highest point of the seat? Yeah, go on right then. There. there. I can actually just fully this is see an the front of the car now. incredibly scientific test here. I think that's three feet. I think, really? I think you've got a parallax <laughs> error there, but... <laughs> I, no, I think the highest point of that seat is three feet in the air. It's a bit tricky, because obviously I have to come yeah. up, off the seat, but... Mm. But it's about that far from the floor to there. Yeah? Okay. Not bad. Three feet to beat. Right, well, I'll put this back down, and then we'll go and try is out it the range. just mentioning the, the rear row? Shall I, shall I sit myself back there? You get it, yeah, you, you Go on put then. the seats up and get in. Ooh. I'm going to put my seat back there. Right. No. Ah, there's another loop to pull. Ooh, that needs a clean. <laughs> that really needs a clean. It's a Land Rover, it's been used. Let's see if we can figure this out. One. <sighs> Two. Have you done it? Yes, of course I've done it. I've got a master's degree in mechanical engineering. I'd have to hand that back if I couldn't figure this out. <laughs> so, you yeah. haven't put the headrest up, Jasper. Oh, no, I haven't. You have Sorry. to flip it out. Yes. So a proper headrest, proper grab handle, actual lighting, and the ceiling's high enough that makes it airy, so I can see the benefit of and that you can see over lift the middle in the row. roof line. And yeah, absolutely. You can see forwards. Wonderful. The seats are quite easy to fold up, fold up and down. It's you know, it is well designed. I shall demonstrate folding this back down. So button on the side of the headrest, fold that under, and then, hey, base of the seat flips up and over. That forms part of your boot floor, and then backrest drops down, and that also forms the rest of your boot floor. So very nicely integrated. So, my dear colleague, how was getting into this car? Well, as a sidestep, but yes. it's a bit wobbly. A bit wobbly? Yeah, this bit is. Yes, J <laughs> JLR things. Yes. Um, that, that end is not overly well attached. D yeah, yeah, you don't need to demonstrate. No. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but in terms of actual access to the car, it's, it's quite similar, isn't it's it? It's broadly the same. Got, a great big grab handle. I don't think on the back these doors seat. open as wide. No, they don't. I think access into the car is slightly inhibited. Uh, it's not quite as easy to get in and out mm. as the disco is. And um, I also think that 
these doors are potentially a little bit smaller. The opening's not quite as large. Yeah. Um, as but the this rear is a, this is a more compact car. It's certainly not as boxy. No. Uh, as demonstrated by the fact there is no third row here. Yeah. But what do you what do you like for space in the back? I mean, obviously well, I'm tiny. Yeah. I mean, I've, I could play tennis back here. The amount of legroom so I've if got. I, but if I uh, if you put if you assume the furthest back position. Which is usually what I go for. There's fully back. And I'm yeah, fully so down my knee, I couldn't then get my knees behind. Mm. But would but, you still be actually, you'd still be comfortable? Well, yes, because I would just, I would just manspread. Headroom wise, I definitely don't have as much headroom in here. No, the ceiling my, is lower. My head mm. is, is brushing. What about forwards visibility? Yeah, I can, well, obviously I can see over you, but um, <laughs> I think I would be able to see over, all round, yeah. uh, uh, a, a normal sized person. Um, so, this this is quite, it's, it's comfortable. Obviously the materials are way nicer in here than they yeah, are in the I think, disco. No, they're not bad in the disco by any stretch. No, not but at all. I think it's a higher level in here, isn't it? Yeah. The disco's certainly got more practical touches in its interior. It's more functional as opposed to luxurious. Yeah. Because um, the, the, the cup holders in this, the cup holder situation in this is poor in comparison. I mean, this rear door pocket is... is Tiny. Yes. Um, Whereas yes. you could actually get a champagne bottle in the uh, door Pro pocket of the disco yes. Which um, is obviously consumer so advice. if you run hen parties by a disco... Yeah? Um, oh, they, they they tend to do prosecco. Yeah, I was gonna say champagne. Yeah. Same yeah. size bottles. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I've got heated seats in the back here. That's another thing. While in the very boot of the disco you have your your little climate vents and a fan speed controller, you actually have a proper adjustable temperature. It's not fully kind of set a temperature in the back here. It's not a full third zone of climate control, but you've certainly got controllable temperature vents. You've also got heated seats on both of the outer I rear do. seats in the, on that row, two I stage. Do. I didn't have that in the disco. Front seats here, three stage heated and three stage ventilated. And then the dashboard in this, it's a little bit more modern, I'd say. Uh, I can see that you have, because this is a facelift model, mm. you have a better screen than me yes. and it's also just a bit less cluttered there's no dial pad for example because mm. it's not 1987 anymore <laughs> and but you do still have the massive buttons and dials for yeah, very using usable. when you gloves yeah. yeah i think on the whole this is it's a cleaner interior yep um design wise but it's it's no less you know that that interior is absolutely fine you know, yeah. it does exactly what you need it to and it's it's pretty good um this is just a little bit more luxurious it's plusher while still doing the same things jasper yes let's find out if your command driving position is higher than mine am i more commanding are you more commanding go on Did you bring the, bring the, the buckle measure. up tape measure of truth i think 95 centimeters which is a couple of centimeters more it is a couple which, of centimeters more and so it should be because the range rover is the pinnacle of the model range anyway that pretty much covers that so i think what we've been waiting to do all day is drive them so should we do that yeah green Ooh. laning Ooh.
So, we've done some driving and continuity error. I'm in comfortable shoes that aren't like two sizes too small for me and cutting off circulation in my feet. Um, my they were feet too are... big for him. No, the, bo the boots that I borrowed were far too small and they my were too feet big. lost circulation and got really, really cold. They were a women's size five and they were too big. They were not too big. <sighs> anyway, we've done some actual, you could almost call it proper green laning today. This Nearly. Is, it's the most green laning I've ever done. I've only and ever done off-roading on a professional course. course. Yeah, this is ac we've done actual green laning today. Yeah. And it's been quite fun. Yes, the and cars look all the better for it. Yes, a bit muddy. This is what Land Rovers should look like. And I think what we can definitely say is that they've both actually coped incredibly well. Well, it's not even... This hasn't felt stressed at all, I don't think. And probably the same for you. It, it was like there was nothing there. Yeah. There it's was just... No bother. Mother, just... Mother Abbott would be pleased. Climb every mountain. They do seem to just go anywhere. Go beyond. Go beyond. And I guess the, the question is that, what am I trying to say? Which would you rather have? Well, it depends, doesn't You've it? You literally it, bought I that mean, one. Yes, I would buy this. Because you have. Because I have. Yeah. But I think it just depends what you want out of the car, doesn't it? Well, I think the only way to really decide is to ask the Land Rover expert who's walking in with dogs in shot I think number one. Yeah. We need to commend the Sang Young Rex. No, I was just gonna go I was gonna get onto that. Because it's done everything these have done. Yes. And it wasn't easy, but it wasn't massively taxing. I mean we didn't do anything crazy. No. Mm -hmm. But But the, it's as much as off roading as you'd ever need to do. Absolutely. Yes. Being realistic about things. Yeah. Unless you're ac unless you're doing off roading for fun, like the people that we've seen today mm -hmm. who come with massive tyres and uh, <laughs> snorkels. snorkels and yeah. stuff like that, then you don't need anything more than any of what no, any of these yeah. three cars have done. So which would you rather have? Discovery 3. Yes. It, it just <laughs> does more for me. Yeah. Is that because you had one as a family car for a number of years and then a Disco 4? I'm sure that's absolutely not relevant in any way at all. There's certainly <laughs> sure. no nostalgic attachment to discoveries <laughs> in my life. None. None whatsoever. Absolutely none whatsoever. I'm able to completely compare these cars on their merits. And it's the Disco 3. Yeah. And um, if you want... That sounds like a biased conclusion. It, well, it's, it's the conclusion we've reached. And if you want to watch full reviews of this car, Harry has done one, and a full review of that car, Jasper has done. Or a full review of that, that car, yeah. Harry... Will either be out or be out soon. Soon, yes. Mm. Um, so check all those things out. Yeah. If you've enjoyed today's video, and why wouldn't you have, really? Um, we have. <laughs> Give it a like. Um, comment down below and tell us how crap we are at driving off-road. Road. and uh, subscribe that's the most important thing no, no, you don't get you're terrible at driving off-road what you get is I could do that in my 1998 Toyota Corolla <laughs> yes it would be a lot of people saying that they could to, do to which we say phone us yeah uh, we'll bring us, you here we'll bring you here you can bring your 1998 Toyota Corolla and we will watch you rip the engine out from underneath the car yeah yeah, so we'll see you see you then. Um, yeah. If you want to um, support us in other ways, we have memberships, oh, we yeah. have merch, merch that we're all wearing, mm -hmm. uh, we have Patreon, yes. and you can do this weird thing called thanks. But anyway, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. Hola, Milo. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> He's going to be there now. Yeah. For the video. <gasps> Hola, Zorro! <laughs> Hola! Hola! Milo! Zorro? Vim! Zorro! Oh. Vim. Go on, go back. My heart! <laughs>